Yeah, the entire Republican Party is pro-Reagan, pro-life, pro-Israel. The last question was, after you're president, how will America be better? And suddenly we're back to Israel again. It's just this, this checking off of the boxes and the virtue boxes. And it's one of the things I like about, um, in fact, I think they're probably pandering, which was the subsequent tweet, they're probably pandering to evangelicals. So Ann Coulter has come under attack the Republican presidential debate, she, she tweets out as three of the different candidates are talking about uh, how, how will America look when you're president and they, they bring up Israel and she has an issue with this. Why are they talking about Israel? We're talking about America. And she asked this question, uh, how many blanking Jews, and she had part of the F word written out, how many blanking Jews do these people think there are in America? What? Now, now, my first issue with that is that she professes to be a Christian. You might say, Christian? She speaks plainly about being a Christian. In fact, years back, she got, she got in trouble. Another controversy, she was on with a Jewish host on TV, and she said that Jews need to become Christians, need to be, quote, perfected. I wasn't offended by that as a Jewish follower of Jesus. I wasn't offended by that because I understood what she was saying in an imprecise way, that Jews need Jesus. Yes, I believe Jews need Jesus. And someone on Town Hall responded to, to my article about Ann Coulter today, and they said, why do you refer to yourself as a Jewish follower of Jesus? Once you're baptized, once you're a Christian, you're no longer a Jew. Of course you're still a Jew. Of course, Paul was still a Jew to his dying breath. Jesus is coming back as the line of the tribe of Judah. Being, being a Jew does not mean only practicing traditional Judaism. It means being Jewish by blood as well. Plus, the most Jewish thing I could do is believe in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, a rabbi. The savior of the world is a Jewish rabbi. How's that? But, but back to Ann Coulter. First, Ann, if, if you're claiming to be a follower of Jesus and a Christian, and you're going to use talk like that, these blanking Jews, how many blanking Jews, the, the F word partly blotted out, what, what kind of talk is that? And, and you're upset with people for questioning where you stand. You say in, in, in your book, because you've responded to some of the critics, you say in, in your recent book, you've got a whole chapter on Netanyahu and Israel, and you love Israel. You say, look, you, you said suddenly that if, if, if these Republican candidates want votes, they want to get applause from their GOP donors, what do you do? You, you, you start a war. You say you're going to start a war. You cite Reagan. You say you're pro-life. You cite Israel. This is what you do if you want to get, uh, if you want to get cheers from the, the Republican base. And, and, and then, Ann, you said subsequently, look, I, I love fetuses, I love Reagan, I love Jews. Well, I don't hear you talking about blanking Reagan, effing Reagan, or blanking fetuses. or uh, Why this kind of about Jews suddenly sounds strange about it, as if they're pandering to how many Jews there are in America. You say, well, no, they're pandering to the evangelicals. Well, have you ever heard Marco Rubio talk about Israel? Have you ever heard... Uh, Ted Cruz talk about Israel. Do you know how deep these things go? And and did it dawn on you that the reason they're talking about this when it comes to America is because of the, the Iran issue? As Ted Cruz said, a nuclear Iran is America's greatest security threat. I know you're focused on the Ill illegal immigration issue, and too, that's the whole issue, and the Republicans won't win an election with all the illegal immigration. I know it's the big issue, too, but you have to understand it's not necessarily the biggest issue to all these candidates, and it's not necessarily the number one issue. But, but here's, here's where I really have a concern. And let me grab this quote here. You said the people who are upset, and I question you. I said, I'm not calling you an anti-Semite, but do you have a problem with the Jews? Do you have, to refer to them that way would, would raise a question to me. Do you have a problem with Israel? Do you think America is, 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 puts too much emphasis on its relationship with Israel? Here's what concerns me. You said this to your critics. It's totally fake outrage from frauds who want to continue the dump of third worlders on the country, including Muslim jihadists, and voted for the guy who just gave a nuke to Iran. You're telling me that, that all of those major voices that voiced criticism, it was all fake outrage and they're all frauds? I don't know if you read what I wrote. You may have made your statement before seeing what I wrote, if you saw what I wrote at all. But there's no fake outrage on my part. There's some shock and grief and concern. Wouldn't it be better? I, I know you're into controversy. I, I know you choose your words carefully to often provoke controversy. I know you're, you thrive on controversy. But perhaps it would be better to be more careful with your tweets rather than to make the tweets and then to denounce those and mock those who had a problem with it. Hey, is that too much for us to ask, especially 
from a professing Christian? And how about this? If you realized you blew it, said something you shouldn't, say, I blew it. Please forgive me. God, forgive me. That's a very Christian thing to do.